How's it going guys, RXXC here with, uh, we have something different, we're going to be doing a how to play the new Bakugan TCG video. Uh, it's a little late, but we were waiting till the game kind of got finalized, and recently Bakugan did post uh, their final versions of the rules. They are the uh, last rendition, they've been posted, and then they said that they're not going to change. They tried to write them so that they could uh, add new things to the game so that uh, it will work later. So. The rules have been posted. I'm going to leave a link down in the description to the website where they posted it. Uh, if you want to download their mobile app that has a little uh, version of the game that you can kind of play around and play with the the, uh, the balls, if you want to say that. Uh, but um, I'll leave a link to all that. But first, uh, let's talk about what you need to actually play the game. All right. Um, obviously, you're going to need your Bakugan. You have a team of three. That team of three can consist of pretty much any Bakugan that you want to use as long as they are not the same exact Bakugan. I cannot have uh, two Ventus Mantanoid Ultras on my team. But as you can see, I have two Garganoid Ultras on my team uh, and that is completely legal. Also, since this is thrown around all the time, you can have as many Ultras on your team as you want. So to show you that, this is a deck we made that has three Ultras on the team. That is completely legal. There is nothing wrong with that. That has been proven and it's in the rules and everything like that. The only, the only constriction you have on your team building is you can't have the same exact Bakugan on your team. All right, uh, so just getting that clear because people have been throwing that around, okay? You need your three Bakugan. You need your three Bakugan's character cards, which will be off to the side. We'll show you later when we uh, do a little bit of gameplay. Uh, and then every Bakugan on the character card comes with uh, their Baku cores that are you that you are required to use to play the card. Okay, uh, there are different versions of each Baku core. Obviously, uh, if you've been opening the Bakugan, you come they come with a bunch of different kinds, different boosts and stuff. You can use whatever version of those that you want, um, but it has to be those. So this Garganoid here needs a red shield and a green fist, and you choose whatever numbers or whatever that you want on them. Uh, speaking of that, on the bottom you are allowed to mark your Baku core with uh, whatever you want as long as it doesn't cover the numbers or alter the uh, basically what it is. You can't like mark over the red fist or anything like that. Um, that is legal. They did say that as well uh, because that was one thing that when I was originally playing the game that I thought was kind of a problem because if you're going to tournaments with you know 20, 30 people and you're mixing cores with people on the board you know you're going to need a way to figure out who's is who. So this is completely legal, so this one just has a little X or a T, I don't know. This isn't my deck. But anyway, so uh, you will have three Bakugan that have two cores on them, so you will have six cores coming into the brawl, and your opponent will have six cores, so there should be 12 cores on the Matrix uh, during the battle uh, before they start getting picked up by play. So uh, uh, besides that, that's kind of what you're playing with. Uh, also, you have a 40-card deck, uh, made out of cards that are from your factions. So uh, we have Ventus and Heos here, or Heos, what it's supposed to be, but I don't like to change what I've already been saying. Uh, but uh, So I have Ventus and Heos here, so my deck is only going to consist of Ventus and Heos cards. But you do notice that I have the Auralis cards in here. Auralis is the secret faction or a legendary faction or they haven't really gone into exactly what it is but it's supposed to be mysterious or whatever uh, but Auralis are usually more powerful Bakugan uh, and because of that to nerf the power that they have already they only have evolution cards so there are no uh, ability cards or heroes or anything for Auralis as of yet and I, I don't think that's going to change that's probably not what they're trying to do with that if anything, they'll just make more powerful Orlis Bakugan, probably. But you can see, this is the deck we have here. I have a couple of Orlis Evolutions, but everything else is Ventus and Heos. That is how that works. Um, let's talk about the different kinds of card types that you make your deck out of. Um, I have examples here. You have the uh, traditional just ability card. Now, the way these cards work is every turn, uh, after you draw for turn, uh, you are to place an energy down. You don't have to, it's not mandatory, uh, but you do place an energy down, face down, and that is energy for you to spend in order to play the mana, or the, excuse me, the energy cost of uh, each card that you want to play. Every card that you play is going to have a energy cost, even the flip cards, but we'll talk about those in a second. So this is just a normal action card. Uh, you can see it down here, it says action and then they have an ability. Once you play 
the or use the energy people call it tapping when you turn it sideways so if it's here you tap it sideways to say you're using that energy at this moment uh, to play the card it goes out and then its ability will resolve okay uh, so those are just action cards once those are done you go ahead and get rid of those and then also next we have hero cards which are normally just characters from the show uh, but they actually have their own zone uh, so for us on our very fancy uh, Matrix Max, uh, which we did release recently. If you want to go check those out, link in the description. But we do make these. We can customize them for you, or we do have some uh, normal uh, uh, basic versions of uh, designs for you to go look at. But go check that out. Link down in the description. Uh, anyway, on our mats here, we did leave a spot for hero cards to go. They do go off to the side, and you'll play them over here like this. Usually what these do, uh, they have like a... Um, like a long-lasting ability or ability that's always active. Constant ability, if you want to call it that. Um, so like Winton here says, he's he's always here, and he says, when you open a Bakugan, you can energize the top card of your deck, which says I can take top card of my deck and just place it down in my energy over here. Uh, and then he also has a second ability that if you have 15 or more energy, you get 1,500 B-Power added to your Bakugan. Uh, but that's just Winton. Every, every hero is different, um, but heroes are pretty cool. Uh, but they do go off to the side and they stay there unless destroyed by a card or uh, an ability of some kind. Right now I think it's just cards that can get rid of them. Uh, other than that, that's how heroes work. Uh, next we have evolution cards. So this is the evolution for my Mantanoid Ultra here. This is Hyper Mantanoid Ultra. Um, evolution cards kind of work the same way as any other card. You pay the cost to use them and then on your character area down here uh, that we have on our mats, uh, usually these will be over here like that uh, you just go ahead and place these on top of the original character and you will gain the benefits so regular Mantanoid Ultra has 600 B power and one attack power and Hyper Mantanoid Ultra once I play him raises his stats to this number you don't add this number to the base stat you get this number that is displayed there so now he has a thousand B power and one attack but his ability, which he gains after he evolves, uh, says that he gets one attack for each ener energy card you have in play. Uh, so usually the evolutions do give you some kind of stats boost or a fancy ability for that Bakugan to have. And then th this stuff stays, uh, unless there are cards that say you can uh, devolve, if you want to call it that, your opponent's Bakugan or something like that. Uh, so these will stay in play. Uh, so going into a little more detail on those uh, before we get into flip cards, uh, <laughs> You might have noticed my little line of trucks over here. I did do that for a reason. It's not a weird flex, I promise. <laughs> um, but this is regular trucks. This is diamond trucks. This is trucks ultra. And this is diamond trucks ultra. I wanted to show you this because people are confused about what diamonds mean. This trucks and this trucks are exactly the same. If uh, you're into Pokemon and you like shiny hunting or whatever, you can consider this a shiny version of this Bakugan. So if I want to play with this and I had a Trox, I can play with this figure. It's, it's, it's only dealing with the figures. If I, want, if I had a normal Trox, I would play with this one if I wanted to. It's just, you know, if you like a, a blinged out deck or whatever, you like all hollow cards. It's like having a holographic version of the figure. The figures don't mean anything, okay? Uh, well, they mean something, but the color of the figures or the, the, the diamondness of the figures doesn't mean anything. It's just, it's just like, I guess you can call that a flex, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then Trox is not the same as Trox Ultra, if you can't tell by the figure, but the same thing goes with the Ultras. This one is the same exact version as this one. They just have a little bit of different paint. This one's a little more shiny, and he's clear. But same thing, you use it with the same card. Now saying that, you might be confused because there are diamond cards. So this is Diamond Trox Ultra. This is just a regular evolution of Trox Ultra. That does not mean that, I guess if you wanted to, you could, but probably not. Play with this one and then evolve him to Diamond Trox Ultra. And then I guess you could bring that one out. But if I'm just playing with this one and I have normal Trox, it, it, nothing changes with this. This is just the figure for you to play the game with. So Diamond Trox Ultra. Uh, that is Diamond Trox Ultra. There's also right now a Diamond Trox, which works for regular Trox. The cards have to go with what the figures say. Okay, so um, 
I couldn't play Diamond Trucks on Trucks Ultra. You could, I mean, you could put it in your deck, I guess, but it wouldn't work. <laughs> no reason for that. Um, there are different levels of evolution. So there's uh, the regular your regular character card, then there's Hyper, and then there's Titan. So this is Titan Trucks, which can only be played on regular Trucks, not Ultra Trucks. And then there are some Maximus cards, which are usually for Ultras, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So... Um, uh, there is kind of an evolution line to it, uh, kind of like, I guess, Pokemon or whatever, but if you want to think of it as the easiest way to, to say it, I guess, is what, like, Ventus Knight said in one of their videos, um, you can move up, so, like, as long as you have that this card costs more than the evolution before it, you can go up, but you can't go down. So if I say there was a, a Maximus Trucks, which there isn't yet, which I, I oh, man, <laughs> I would be really happy if that happened. If we, if we could work on that, I would be really happy. But say there was a Maximus Trucks, okay, that cost like seven energy. Later in the game, if I wanted Titan Trucks' ability instead, I couldn't overlay Titan Trucks onto that higher cost in Maximus Trucks, okay? Uh, so that is just a better explanation of how all this stuff works. Hope I cleared up the diamond thing because people are very confused about that. Uh, so we'll get these guys out of the way. Um, so, uh, that's everything you need to play the game, except we'll get out of the characters, and now we have these cards, which, if you don't know how they work, they, um, can save you in some pretty tough spots. So the way the game works is that you battle the, uh, opponent's Bakugan once they both stand on a core, which we'll talk about here in a second, with, uh, each Bakugan's B power. Once the battle is won, so somebody has the highest B power and the other person can't, play any cards or do anything to win, the attack will now go through. The attack says that the opponent will discard cards off the top of their deck for the amount of the attack damage that is being done. What happens is with flip cards, if you flip over a flip card during that step, you have, an ability, you have a chance to pay the cost of the flip card with your energy to get the effect down here, which normally says it has a stop symbol, which I'll zoom in on right there, and it, it says what it can stop. So this stops a non-Ventus Bakugan, and you can draw a card. Uh, I brought two of these out because I just wanted to show you, just for future reference, that there are like, there's zero cost flips. As of now, it, it's gonna change. There's zero cost flips, which will usually block a certain faction. Like, it will say stop Aquas, or stop Darkwas. It's a zero cost because you're you know, it's it's only stopping one thing, so it, it's kind of a, a gamble. Uh, there's three cost flips, which are going to just stop everything that's not the color that you're using. So this is just stop non-Ventus. Then there's the four cost flips, which are usually a little more fancy, or they do uh, a more impressive ability after they stop. So they usually still stop, uh, but maybe there's a different stipulation. There's like Curse of Darkus, right? That's the name. Pact, Pact. Pact of Darkus that uh, you, pay, you can pay for to stop non-Darkus or whatever, or uh, its ability says that you can just discard a card and then you stop it for, well, free, but you're discarding a card. So there's different levels of flips, if you want to call it that, different tiers. Um, but those are all the different uh, cards in the game. Uh, but we're going to uh, cut here and set up the board and show you all how to actually play and a little bit of interaction. We're not going to play a whole game. We're just going to show you all how the interactions work. Uh, between player and player and how the game works. Hey guys, uh, as I was going through the video during editing, I noticed that we actually didn't tell you how to win the game, which would be an important part of a how to play the Bakugan TCG video, I believe. So, uh, just going over that, uh, as you take damage, obviously as you saw, you, you remove cards from your deck, you, you keep losing cards and stuff. Uh, the way you win the game is when you bring your opponent uh, down to zero and then one over. So if they have one card in their deck and you do one damage to them and they have to discard that card, you did one damage to them, they do not lose the game. They just don't get to draw next turn. They don't have anything to draw off of. You can't kill yourself in the game by drawing. Uh, so if I now have zero cards and visual hits me for one damage or 20 damage, I have zero cards in my deck. I then flip my zero basically and lose the game. So that's how you lose the game. Uh, or win the game and lose the game. Um, another thing we forgot to mention was the different like little abilities. So there's Shadow Strike, uh, Frost Strike, and Double, Double Strike. 
Uh, so Shadow Strike is the one that's probably the most important at this point. Shadow Strike is like the little S with a little sword through it that says that um, this Bakugan's uh, uh, damage or anything can't be lowered at all. And that involves like some cards will remove things from it or lower its B power, lower its attack, or uh, even remove a core from it. All three of those things can't be done to something with Shadow Strike. It prevents anything that debuffs the Bakugan whatsoever. Uh, so that's Shadow Strike. Double Strike doubles the attack stat of the Bakugan when it's attacking. Um, and that only works on a team attack if it is the active Bakugan. If it's sitting on the bench or whatever you want to call it, and it has Double Strike, it's only going to do its base damage when getting added to the full team attack. But if it is active, you do get the Double Strike because it's, it's doing the attack. So, you know, you might want to save those for the team attack if, if you have that option. Uh, the last one is Frost Strike, which will give you uh, or make your opponent have to pay more to play their flip cards when you apply it. So uh, some cores have a, uh, a additional Frost uh, benefit, so like add one Frost. Uh, Cindius Ultra has uh, one Frost on him, just as his ability. Uh, there's a bunch of Aquas Nilius, cards. Nilius Aquas. Yeah, Aquas Nilius has Frost as well. If you land on a uh, Red Shield. Red Shield, yeah. And then uh, there's just a bunch of Aquas cards that give you Frost Strike as well. And some of them are like plus four. So, I mean, your opponent will have to pay like six or... Even this core has Frost Strike. Yeah, so this is one of the cores that has Frost Strike on it as well. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's it. And so we'll cut back to the regular video right here. Pow! Guys, we're back. And uh, so we set up our game board. And the way you do that, if you have one of our Matrix mats here... Uh, we usually put uh, our decks on this top slot that we have here, and then this will be our discard zone. This will be a zone for our energy, and then obviously these are our character card zones. You'll notice that you have to start the game with your character cards flipped over with your Bakugan sitting on top of them. Those don't get flipped over until that Bakugan rolls out and stands. Uh, that does have interaction with the game too, so you, you, you have to do it this way or uh, some cards won't work the proper way. Um, but other than that, uh, you do uh, flip a core to see who goes first. So usually we just say that the big face thing is heads and then the back is tails. Uh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, so what do you call it, Adriel? Uh, I got heads. All right. Ooh. Tails. Uh, so now I get to place the first core. So working with these new priority rules, what that says is the person who places the last core has the priority to play the first card in the interaction during the battle. Okay. So we'll get that. Uh, we'll get to that part once we do that. But I won the flip, so I'm going to place my first core. Um, there are trap cores and stuff like that. So like, uh, I don't have any here. You have any trap cores? Yeah. Oh, sorry. He didn't want to tell me he had a trap core. But it's not. Uh, but there is some strategy to placing your cores. Like some Bakugan have effects where you, you they want to land on a specific core like I think this Garganoid has yeah. a uh, thing for fire fist so I want this one to be closest to me so I'm not gonna put that one in the middle because I gotta work hard to get to that one uh, so I will put something that's not that great in the middle and then visual goes next and then we just kinda file in after that and um, you just you can put it wherever you want if you want to build a straight line all the way out here that's fine but you do have to Roll your Bakugan from two card lengths away from the uh, the last core on the matrix there. So just think about that if you, you want to have good uh, room to work with. So we will finish putting our cores down here. Uh, I think I think we would add a turn. Oh no no, no we're right there we go. Yeah. So now visual places the last core. All right. So uh, at this point the game is about to start. Uh, you always shuffle your deck before. If you're new to card games, it's just card game etiquette kind of stuff. You shuffle your deck. If you don't know how to do that, you split it. And then you can push your cards in through my, for an, uh, from an angle. Excuse me. And then just kind of push them in. And that's a nice little shuffle. You do that a couple of times. Don't riffle your cards. Don't riffle your cards. These are thin little Bakugan cards. We don't want to bend your Wintons and your Titan Dragonoids and things like that. Uh, but... Once you get done with that, you always offer your opponent the chance to cut your deck in half so there's no cheating involved, so usually you can do that. And you just stack it back up and give it back to them. And then 
Way you start Bakugan is the uh, both players will draw five cards at the start. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you can look at your hand there. And then once, once both players are ready, uh, you can draw your card for the first turn. The different thing about this game is that both players will take this part of the turn at the same time. So this is kind of like, uh, if you want to call it the open phase or something like that, both players are going at the same time. So we will both draw for turn here. And then at this point, you have a chance to play energy. Uh, just for advice, if you get a flip card, which we talked about earlier, those have no use to you while they're in their hand, while they're in your hand as of yet. So uh, usually if you draw a flip card on your first hand or at any point if they're in your hand, normally you use those for energy so that you don't have to waste your cards that can actually help you. Uh, for me, I don't have anything like that. Uh, so just for the sake of this, I'm just gonna put something down. You place your energy face down. Um, there, there's different ways to do it. You can stack your energy up like in this long way, like this. That's what uh, the people from Bakugan have been doing. Uh, but there's no like regulation on that. So what we do is on our matrix mat here, we put them down in the zone down here and we work this way with energy. So, uh, but I place my energy down for the turn. We're both ready. You can check with your opponent, say if you're ready or whatever. I'm ready, I have no cards. Right, and then so uh, you both pick a Bakugan uh, to roll out. So uh, you just choose, and then if you don't know, on the figures there is a little arrow that kind of helps you uh, know where to roll, especially in the ultras. You don't want to hit all the bumps and stuff. You want to pick a good uh, a good uh, rolling direction there. So I do actually have a card to play. You have a card to play now. Yeah. Okay, so that's fine. You can play cards at any time during the game. I'm going to evolve into my Hyper Dragonoid, All which right. will cause this to flip over. Right. So, yeah, evolving, obviously you have to flip the card over. So now I know what he has there. Uh, he did evolve. So evolving you can do at any time. You can do it before you pick your Bakugan. You can do it, which is more recommended, after your Bakugan has rolled out. Uh, so that you can almost kind of use it as an ability to raise your B power or things like that. But again, evolutions raise B power, attack, give you abilities, or whatever. Uh, the Dragonoids have all these like one, one cost flips or one cost uh, evolution yeah, cards. Yeah, Hyper Dragonoid and Pyrus Dragonoid, I believe, have one yeah. cost. They, uh, that they're pretty cool that way. Um, but yeah, so you can do that any time during the game. So, uh, are you ready to go? I am. So. I'm going to try to get two card lengths away. On a matrix mats, we do have these runways that lets you kind of back up, get all the way away. So I'm definitely two card lengths away. You don't want to be up here. A lot of people see on like the arena and stuff that, you know, you're kind of close and it's not really uh, following the rules per se. So that's why we did this yeah. for our mats. But uh, two card lengths away. And then you count down together three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, brawl. Whatever you want to do, but we just say go. So three. Two, one, go. All right, so we both stand. Uh, we both pick up a core. So when you pick up these cores, they give you these bonuses, and those bonuses are active pretty much immediately. Uh, we both stand, or he, he was already uh, flipped over, but I stood up with my Bakugan, so I'm gonna flip his character card over and then look at his stats. So I start with 400 B power. I landed on this fist that gives me uh, 150 B and plus four attack, but we're looking at the B power as of now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I just take those and kind of put them off to the side and then you place your open Bakugan back on its character card. So I'm at 100 and, or 550 B power. What are you at? 650. So he's at 650. So as of now, he is winning the brawl. But at this point in the game, you have the chance to play cards to um, boost up your Bakugan's power. But like I said earlier, he does have the priority from the core. So uh, as of now... I still have that priority? Yeah, so as of now, you can play a card to just kind of maybe, if you want to overwhelm me right off the top. If not, he can just pass priority. Or you just say, you can. You, I don't have anything. Or whatever you want to say. Uh, so he already played his energy. Yeah, I'm so already out of energy. He doesn't have anything, so uh, I assume the priority over to me, and then I can play things, but uh, we only have one energy down at this point in the game, uh, so that is not possible. Uh, so we are going to move on. Uh, I am going to take the damage because I cannot win this brawl. All right. I can't win, so my core goes back into the matrix, wherever I want it to go. It doesn't have to go back where it was, uh, and then you do roll up your Bakugan, too. Character card stays flipped over because everybody That's already knows what it is. Uh, but we will do that. And then how much damage am I taking? Six. Six damage. So again, 
I am going to take those cards and flip them off over here to, I hit, I hit a stop, but I don't have the energy to pay for it, so I just kind of have to take it. Two, three, I hit another stop, four, and five. So these six. cards are, six? Mm -hmm. No, six, there we okay. go. So uh, those cards get discarded, and now my life has gone down. All right, and then once the turn is over, uh, there is an opportunity at this point to play more cards. A lot of people like to play that card turn to energy or maybe evolve here so you don't have to waste your energy next turn. You do have a spot right here to play some more cards. Once both players are done, uh, you agree to go ahead and then we draw for the next turn. So, yeah. you ready? Yep. Draw. All right, so same system again. We're going to go ahead and set up, play your energy down for the turn, and then pick your Bakugan once again. Uh, I'm going to choose a different Bakugan because you don't have to roll the same one that you had out before. Uh, if he failed and I didn't like it, or he's not rolling well for me at the moment, I'm going to pick somebody else. So, uh, I'm going to pick this Bakugan for this turn. Again, you do have a chance to play cards at this point preemptively. Play a hero, play an evolution if you want to. Uh, you don't have to though. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Alright, so... He did not stand, but I did. So what that says is that I automatically win the battle, so I don't really have to work with my B-Power right now because I'm not fighting anything. Uh, but I can work with my attack if I want to. So he opened, I'm going to flip him over. I already have a base three attack, but my core is adding four attack to that. So I'm sitting at seven. Let's see if I have anything to uh, change that. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, I wouldn't ever play this card at this point in the game, but I'm going to now. Uh, but I'm going to tap my two energy to play Endless Growth, which is going to give me, for each energy that I play, or each energy that I tap to play this card, I am going to get uh, either B power or attack for it. So I'm going to take the two attack to add to my seven. Nine. So now I have nine. Uh, so I don't, do you have anything to uh, can't do? I don't have enough for flips. But, so I will just go ahead and tap one and evolve into Hyper Dragonoid or right. this. Right, so he already knows that he's not going to be able to stop it anyway, so he's playing cards to get him out of his hand and preemptively evolve. So and now you're much? taking nine, I think, right? Yeah. Um, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, so he gets rid of a couple flips there. Uh, we are good. Um, again, we have a chance to play cards right here if we want to, but usually you're pretty drained on energy anyway. Uh, I got rid of this. This goes to my discard as well. We reset our energy and draw for turn. All right. So uh, these cores do stay on the Bakugan once they've won. Uh, I like to place them ahead over here so that I can keep track of what I'm doing. Uh, and yeah. So. Do this. You ready? Yep. Three, two. One. All right, double stand, Serpentis. Oh, that's a new deck. <laughs> um, all right, so I stand, he stands. I'm sitting at 600 B power with a fifth, plus 50 core. So I'm at 650. Uh, what are you at? I'm at 300. I mean, yeah, 300. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tap two and play Might of Sindius. Which this turn, the card this is the turn this card is played. Uh, the victor is decided by attack power and not B power. Right. So, yeah. so my have, flips the game a little bit. I'm at nine attack power. Another thing I forgot to say is if you win the brawl, the turn before, the priority goes to the loser of the brawl on the next turn. Okay. So priority is a thing. It. it if you've played other card games before, it comes pretty naturally to you. But if you haven't before, you have to kind of play in turns, okay? Uh, but he had the priority, so he plays that first. Uh, so you played Might of Cyndius, so now we're looking at attack power to mm -hmm. fight instead of B power. So I'm at three, because I got a plus two core. I'm at nine. You're at nine, and because he actually gets power off of that card. So um, I can't help myself with that. Uh, but... Well, I could play that, but it's not going to help me. Um, 
I'll do it for the sake of this. Uh, I will go ahead and tap three to play a hero card, like we talked about earlier. Uh, you play hero cards, they come over here. Uh, Veronica says, uh, Veronica Venegas says that if you, it has the domination ability, which is Heos's, uh like house ability, if you want to call it. Uh, if you're Bakugan are holding the most Baku cores, they get uh, plus three to your attacks. Doesn't help me now because we're even, but that might help me out later. Uh, so I'm gonna take that. What are you What are you hitting me with? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tap one more. Oh, and play um, Inferno for plus for... two. Plus two for each Pyrus on my team. So that's another four. Okay. And I'm at nines at thirteen. So thirteen. So that's a pretty big attack. Uh, I'll take it over here. And I'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that is my damage taken for turn. Uh, we have a spot to play cards here. I don't have any energy. He doesn't either. So we're going to move on to the next turn. Uh, Make sure you fold up and put your yeah. back up. Uh, my Bakugan lost. He's going to go back up and the court will go back out. And we will move on to the next turn. So uh, what's going to happen here is that visual is set up to maybe let out a team attack, which we will get to once that happens uh, but I am just going to do that and then we will roll again all right ready three two one. Oh, we both miss uh, at this point if you just both miss you just set back up and roll again ready three two one all right so he hits me I don't open he opens uh, so he automatically wins the brawl there but now at this point, he does have a team attack coming. So what happens on the team attack, if you want to think about it this way, the Bakugan that rolled out that turn is launching the team attack to me. Mm -hmm. So anything that is done card-wise is done to the active Bakugan. You don't just add, say if he added attack power or things like that, you don't just add it to the team attack pool, you're adding it to this Bakugan's stats. Uh, same thing goes with removing things or lowering attack stats. You're only lowering this Bakugan's attack. So if you had a card that subtracted 10 damage uh, and the team attack was 20, but this guy's was, what are you at? 14. Okay, so <laughs> if you lowered it by 20, he would go down to zero, and then the rest of the team attack would still go off. Wait, I thought this went to the negatives. Yeah, it, well, it goes into the negatives, but the negatives doesn't subtract from the other ones. The other guys. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can go into the negatives on your attack power. You go into the negatives, but when you're counting it, a negative counts as zero. Okay. When you're counting a team attack, so if he's negative three because I lowered him so much, it would be whatever number zero, whatever number, added to the team attack. So uh, you're hitting me with a team attack. I am. Let's see what's going. I'm gonna fold up while I count this out. We got. Six on Dragonoid. We have 14, so that's 20, 28. 28. So, as you can tell, the, t the team attacks are pretty large uh, numbers usually. Uh, you can fight them all you want, uh, try mm -hmm. to get rid of them, but <laughs> a lot of times you have to hope for flip cards. So, let's see. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and then so I do hit my stop there. Uh, this is Ventus Power, which says I tap four energy to play Ventus Power, which says stop non-Ventus cards and then draw a card for the ability for it. So he rolled out an Auralis Bakugan. Obviously, that is not Ventus, so I get to stop the team attack. Uh, so that's why flip cards are pretty helpful because team attacks, they just blow right through your deck. So uh, I take the ability for that. I draw my card and uh, we will continue playing the game. But uh, for this, guys, uh, we don't have to finish the whole game for you. The video's already long enough, but uh, that is pretty much the like gist. Uh, well, we don't need to play. I don't want to lose. <laughs> I don't need to lose another game on camera. They've seen that too many times. Uh, but anyway, guys, that is our how to play video. Uh, we'll leave the comments open for people to ask questions. Um, I always on my phone checking comments and stuff, so if something wasn't clear, or you don't understand a specific thing about the game, please ask me and Visual and the crew will be uh, lurking in the comments to answer any questions you might have. Um, but uh, just to wrap up the video, make sure you go check out the Matrix mats. 
Links down in the description. We launched our Patreon alongside the Matrix Mats. Go check that out too. Also link down in the description. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, all the usual things. And uh, check back for more Bakugan content, guys. Uh, it's been fun. The game's growing. There's a bunch of like little pictures and leaks and things I've been looking at. And I've been getting all antsy for new stuff coming out. Wave 2 is coming out. Uh, the the la the next uh, like five episodes of the show just came out, so I've been watching that. It's getting really good. I might <laughs> talk about that in the video here pretty soon. It's getting kind of uh, kind of weird. I don't know. I like it. But uh, anyway, guys, check back later for more stuff, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.